Hey, Kevin Purcell here with the Google Pixel Book, and I'm going to give you my review. All right, so the Google Pixel Book is a high-end Chromebook. It costs $999 for the base model, which is what I have here. That comes with a 7th Gen Intel Core i5 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, and 128 gigabytes of storage. So immediately when you first open it up, you'll notice that it kind of has a, a beautiful screen. It's a little reflective, as you can tell while I'm videotaping this, and you can see the reflection of the, the lights above me. But uh, the color is accurate. It's very crisp. It has a, a very high-resolution screen. It doesn't run at its native resolution. Instead, it runs by default at 1280 by 800, I believe it is, uh, which is a pretty good uh, resolution to set it at. You can bump it up just a little bit higher, but if you go to the full native resolution, text will be so small you won't be able to see it. Basically, this is a laptop, and so one of the most important things is going to be the keyboard. It's got a beautiful keyboard and uh, works really well and is easy to type on accurately, quickly. Uh, the keyboard, the keys have enough travel to make them responsive, uh, and yet it's still very thin. As you're typing, you'll notice that the two sides of the uh, uh, keyboard on each side of the trackpad, um, you can't really tell from this video, but they have a very nice, smooth, almost rubber-like surface, which is comfortable and easy to type on. Feels good as you wrist uh, as you rest your wrist while typing if you're kind of a lazy typist like I am. Now let's talk about this trackpad. What a great trackpad. I love the trackpad on this device. It uh, is very large, responsive. Um, I usually pair a mouse with my laptops because I hate trackpads so much, but not with this. It's great. I always use the trackpad instead of pairing a mouse, even though I do carry one with me so that if I'm using my Surface, I can pull it out. The Surface trackpad is the worst, this is the best. It's even better than MacBook tracks pads, which uh, I, I previously I would have said that those are the best on the market. But no, the Pixelbook beats it by a little bit. As you take a look at it, you'll notice it's incredibly thin. It's a well-balanced machine so that when you're holding it, uh, even in tablet mode, it's uh, easy to hold and comfortable. On each side, it has a USB-C port. On this side, uh, the left-hand side, it also has a common uh, headphone jack. And then it's got the uh, rocker switch for a volume up and down. And then down here at the bottom edge, uh, it, the closest to you as you're using it in laptop mode, it uh, has a power button. has an interesting design, kind of a two-tone with white and silver. And uh, the hinges on the back of it are pretty sturdy. They are sturdy enough that it will hold the keyboard up or hold the uh, screen up well, but yet... Notice I was still able to lift up the display with one hand. Now notice how sturdy it is. It's actually lifting the laptop when it gets that high. Now you can use this, as, since it's a convertible two-in-one, you can use it this way with the keyboard facing down. This is great if you want to uh, do presentations or watch some video, setting it on a, a you know, maybe the, the tray table in your, uh, when you're flying or something like that. It also works well in tent mode. For the same purposes. I personally prefer this mode because you can tap on the screen without it wobbling while doing so. It does have a bit of a wobble when you tap on it if you're in laptop mode or in that uh, display mode that I just showed you. Of course you notice now I'm in tablet mode. It's a little bit heavy for a tablet. I would say this is a, a device you're going to use 80% as a, uh, a laptop and then maybe you know, 10% in one of those other two modes and 10% as a tablet. But you can use it as a tablet. And uh, even though it feels weird to have the keys on the back, you know, while you're holding it, those the keyboard disengages at this point, so does the trackpad, so it doesn't matter. And once you get used to the idea of that, not worrying about it, it's no big deal. And it's nicely balanced, so it feels good when you hold it this way. So one of the great benefits of the tablet mode, of course, is... You have the Pixelbook pen. I'll talk a little bit more about that, but let me start by showing you what it's like to write notes on it. It opens up Google Keep, and you can uh, immediately start to uh, uh, take visual notes with it. In Keep, there's almost no lag whatsoever. In fact, I would say none. I don't really notice any. I frankly love it. Now, I don't use Google Keep that much. Instead, I use a, a, an app called... Um, Metamoji Note for my note taking. And uh, again, that app works really well. Now, some people have said that other apps like OneNote and others, it has a little bit of lag in it. You'll have to pick 
your favorite note-taking app and see how it works. From my experience, it, this works great. In fact, I have all three of the major devices that come with a, a nice quali high-quality stylus, and this is my favorite over the Apple Pencil and the Surface Pen. Uh, the Apple Pencil, for my liking, is just a little too long. It feels a little unbalanced. Uh, the Surface Pen is light, but... Um, it just the the inking on it just isn't quite as as nice as the Apple Pencil or the Pixelbook Pen. Of the three, my personal favorite is the Pixelbook Pen. Before that, if you had told me I'd find one that I liked better than the Apple Pencil, I would have laughed at you. Uh, but this is a, a beautiful um, stylus. One thing I don't like, I wish it had that the Surface Book Pencil has or Surface Book Pen has is. Uh, you can use it. You can use it as an eraser in supported apps like Microsoft's OneNote. Uh, you can't do that with either the Apple Pencil or the, the Pixelbook. Now, there's a lot of interesting features about the Pixelbook compared to other Chromebooks, and of course, one I've already talked about, the Pixelbook Pen. It has this little menu right down here that brings up uh, some of the features that you can use. This will capture a region of the screen, uh, the whole screen. So these are great screen grab tools. Uh, you can create a note. Tapping that brings you into a, a brand new uh, Google Keep note. I wish they would let you define which app you'd prefer to use because I don't like Google Keep. You can use the Assistant, and if you tap on that and then start to circle things on the screen, I'll show you that in a minute, it'll search for them. Here's a nice laser pointer. So if you're doing presentations, you can use that. And then, of course, a magnifying glass allows you to... Uh, this is a, also really great for presentations. Notice I've got the pen right here with the the uh, uh, button, this is the Google Assistant button. And notice if you hold that button and then circle things, it creates a little box that then goes and searches for it. So notice how it searched for that verse. So I can copy it, I can share it, or I can do a Google search for it, uh, which is useful. It's searching for Isaiah 9.3, so I can either find the text of 9.3 um, or maybe other things that Google has showing me, telling me about Isaiah 9.3. That's a really great feature. Uh, if you're working in a Word document and you've got a word that you've typed and you want to get some more information about it, you can use it for that. So let's say I want to search for that. Tap the button. And notice it's search for Australia. The other way you can do it, um, let's close that is you can go in here and hit the assistant button and it'll do the same thing. Let me tell you a couple other thing, real quick things about the software. Uh, it has this feature now, it's kind of like a launcher, brings up your most recently used apps and that includes um, the Google Play Store apps. So you can use that or search. If you tap here, it brings up all of your installed apps. Um, and of course notice it does have the Google Play Store. So you can install apps. I've found that about 90% of apps work fine. Uh, not all of them, but about 90%. Let me also tell you about the keyboard. A couple of interesting keys. First of all, it's a Chromebook. And so it uses the Chrome OS keys up here instead of the F1 keys. So, you know, you get all the basic Chrome OS keys. The app chooser, which you can use. Uh, dim and brighten the screen. Uh, play and pause if you've got media playing and pausing um, mute the vo volume increase or lower it and then over here you get a settings menu button notice that pops up the Chrome OS settings down here we also get another launcher button so you'll notice it opens up the launcher it's sort of like a Windows start menu and then we also have uh, the P Pixelbook is very big into the, the Google Assistant. So now we also have a Google Assistant button. So here's what happens when you tap on that and it brings up the Google Assistant. And now I can search uh, for things by typing or if I say, okay, Google, what's the weather like outside? Currently in Valdez, it's 55 and sunny. Today, it'll be sunny with a forecasted high of 55 and a... That's the Google Pixelbook. I'm very pleased. I'm thankful that I've got it. I really like this Chromebook. It's become my go-to system. It's the one I uh, use most of the time, even though I have an iPad Pro and a Surface Book. I've got a desktop Windows machine. 
Uh, this is the computer I prefer to use about 75% uh, of the time. And uh, the only reason I don't use it 100% is because I have the other two, so I'll go ahead and use them on occasion. I think it's worth the money if you really like Chrome OS and you want the best. This is the best Chromebook you can buy. It is a little expensive. Some will say, you know, I don't think I should spend $1,000 on a Chromebook, and maybe you shouldn't. In that case, take a look at the Samsung Chromebook Pro or the Samsung Chromebook Plus. I think those are the other two best Chromebooks available. This has been Kevin Purcell with the uh, Google Pixelbook for review, and I'm giving this a buy for Chrome OS fans.